the next section we're going to have a look at are filter basics. So we did have a very, very brief introduction into filters earlier, and we basically just dragged a field into the filter area and did nothing with it. So now we're going to learn how to use those filters. So to start out with, there's really two types, two main types or statuses of a filter. The first is a set value, and the second is a user prompt. When we're talking about these filters, it's basically the way the value has been defined for the filter. So a set value means that when you create the report, you say what the filter is going to be and it never changes. It doesn't allow the user to pick any options and it just stays the same. When we're talking about user prompt, what happens is you create the filter and you have the opportunity to define some defaults if you want to, um, but the user will always have the option to select their own values when they run the report. So it's, it's the more flexible option, but there's cases where you will want one or the other. Say, for example, you're creating a report where you only want to see uh, you, you're creating a staff report, so you want to see a list of your staff details, maybe their name, their addresses for contact purposes, uh, but you only want to see current staff. You don't need uh, to see your inactive staff members ones that you had years ago or whatever. So in this scenario, what you would do is set the value of your filter. So you would have a filter on staff status or whatever your particular field was that had that little um, piece of information that told you whether or not they were still with the company. And what you would do is set that to equal active so that you're only ever seeing your current employees. Now, the rest of the time, you'll find yourself mainly using the user prompt filters, which means that the user can come in and say, well, I want the date between here and here, and I want this department, and I only need to see this person's sales, and whatever you allow. When you're using user prompt filters, you'll need to format those to make it as easy as possible for the user to make their selection. And this is where our lovely org ref codes come back into play. Not only can you assign a color, a value, and uh, a sort order to your reference code, you can actually assign an icon. And as you can see in this screenshot, we have a little icon associated with each of the demographic values. And this is just making it a lot easier for our users to really go, oh, I know, uh, I want relaxation. It's that little logs by the fire kind of uh, icon. Oh, I know I want the family one. It's a little gingerbread man. So a lot of people relate to things visually, and this is going to make it really easy for your users to select their values if they're that kind of person. And they've always got the text label there if they prefer that. You can also associate uh, colors with these. So instead of having the icons, you could just have a strip of color, which we used in the chart builder. Uh, so it doesn't have to be an actual image if you don't want. And alternatively, you can just use reference codes to provide a list of values. Next we're going to have a look at cached filter values. Now again if that sounds a little bit techy and you never know what a cache is and all that sort of thing, don't worry. Um, basically what a cached filter value is, is when Yellowfin has a look at the field that you used for your filter, so say it's gender, and it goes to the database and gets a complete list of all the possible gender field values. So in our scenario, we only have uh, male and female. Um, if you are looking at something like department, you might have sales, marketing, HR, uh, and so on. So what it does is Yellowfin goes to the database, gets that list of values, and stores it. So it has this little mini list ready to go. And then when the user runs the report, Yellowfin shows the list of values so that the user can pick from that list rather than having to type in 
HR or sales or marketing and worrying about typos and things like that. So cache filter lists are really, really commonly used and they make things a lot easier for the user the majority of the time. To build on those, we then have cache dependent filters. And this basically means that we've uh, set up a little dependency between a couple of filters or, or multiple filters and we've cached the lists accordingly. And again, if that doesn't mean anything to you, basically what it means is if you have uh, two fields that relate to each other, so say for example you might have region and country, and you put those in as filters, what you might want to see is when the user selects a particular region, so say they select Asia, you might only want to see the country values within Asia to make it easier for the user to select the countries thereafter, rather than showing them a full list of countries for the entire world. So that's where dependency comes in and you'll see that working in a, in a little bit when we demonstrate that and it'll make it a little bit easier to understand. Moving on from those types of filters, we'll move on to date filters. And basically, uh, date filters have a few different ways of displaying, but basically you either type in your value you use a calendar to pick your value, which you guys will probably be familiar with from various other systems that you would use day to day. And alternatively, the last option is you would select what we call a predefined date range from a drop down list. And these are commonly used uh, date ranges in business reporting. And what happens is you select the range, and Yellowfin works out what dates actually correspond to that range. So you might say this calendar month and it will work out what month we're in, what the first date of the month is and the last date and use those as the filters. You might say, oops, you might say uh, this calendar month to date and it'll work out the first date of the month and the current date and use those. Okay. So the next item we're going to have a look at are linked filters and this is one of the more complex types of filter and basically it's a way of having multiple filters that kind of pass their values to each other. Uh, so a really good example of why you might use this would be in a benchmarking scenario. So say you have a report where you want to examine uh, a a period it might be a month or a year or something like that and you want to compare it to that time last year what you would do is filter one of the columns to be this month or let the users of let the user define the month and then you would link the filter and say use the same date range but add on a year or subtract a year and Yellowfin will perform the calculation and work out the same month or whatever the user has specified in the previous year. Uh, so that's a really nice way of creating quite a complex scenario. So what we're going to do now is just jump back into the report builder. And we'll have a look at some filters. So what we'll do is drag in some fields. Actually we might drag in a whole hierarchy uh, and we'll drag in a date. Okay so we've got a whole lot of fields but how do we actually set these up? So to start out with we need to go into our settings and have a look at how they work. So our camp region and don't worry if this all looks a little bit confusing to you, It'll, you'll understand it pretty quickly. So camp region is going to be what we call an in-list filter. And this means that the user can specify multiple values and as long as uh, the records are in that list of values they pick, they will be shown. You could change it to something like equal to or different from uh, and things like that. But the most commonly used for this scenario is in list, so we'll leave that. 
We're going to do the same thing for camp country and camp name. And then invoice date is going to be between. And basically this means that the user can specify the start and end date in order to generate a, a range of time. Now, in case we don't understand what's going on up here, down the bottom we actually have some logic written out for us to try and make it a little bit easier to understand. Now, if we were going to set these values, remembering that we had that example where we had uh, only active staff members, we might want to find the status. I'm not sure if we've got that. Let's put this in here and we'll go status and we'll add a filter. And what we're going to say is we only want bookings that are active. So we're going to set it to be equal to. So we only want the booking status to be equal to the word active. And then we're going to define the value. So we could click here and type in a value. But to make it easier, we're going to click on this little icon and we'll see a list of possible values. So we're just going to go with active bookings for now. And what you'll see is this has changed to the value that we've selected. And in the logic down the bottom here, we've specified that it must be active. 